Okay, we are now recording and I want to welcome everybody to our community chat for Thursday, November 19th. Today we have Assistant Town Manager and Director of Conservation and Development, David Zomek, back with us, as well as Planning Director, Christine Brestrup. So welcome to you both. I'm going to mm -hmm. kick it over to Paul to start off with any updates he has. Well, thanks, Brianna. And uh, yeah, this is an exciting day for us. We have a big announcement that we've just listened to by the by Governor Baker uh, for uh, awarding the town a $1.5 million mass works grant. And I'd just like uh, Dave or Chris to talk a little bit about your, your team working with Public Works, put it together, and are, we're successful in getting this very, very competitive grant. So it's really exciting. Who's going to talk about that? Chris, do you want to? Uh, sure. Yeah. Launch so off and I'll we're very excited to get this $1.5 million grant to work on the intersection of West Street, which is also called 116, and Pomeroy Lane. Um, we call it the Pomeroy Village uh, Center. Um, many people are not familiar with it under those uh, terms, but it's really um, a place that's growing. We have Mission Cantina there. We have um, some exciting small businesses, El Comalito. And um, it's, it's really, you know, starting to thrive. And there are a lot of problems with the intersection. There's no really good uh, pedestrian access. Um, bicycle lanes are, are not there. Um, even the sidewalks that are there that are in poor condition. And um, there are often backups at the traffic light, especially southbound in the afternoon. So we would really like to um, kind of improve that intersection to make it more usable for everybody. Um, there are uh, handicapped accessible uh, issues. People aren't able to get down from the sidewalk to cross the road. So I think this is really going to help us a lot to make that a more um, thriving village center. Um, so we're looking forward to making these improvements. Yeah, I would just add, um, Paul, that, you know, this is a project that's been, you know, in the works for a number of years. Um, and as you said, it really was a collaborative effort. Um, we heard loud and clear from a lot of the businesses in that village center, from pedestrians, from people who use it uh, and use those businesses that we need to make some improvements there. Um, it's been growing. Uh, there's, there's a number of residential uh, uh, units there as well, and that people use it to bicycle and walk and, and they want better access and they want it to be safe for pedestrians and and bicycles, as Chris said, and they want it to be uh, uh, accessible to all, all of our residents and visitors alike. So this is many years in the making and kudos to the DPW engineering staff and, and Christine's staff and planning for coming together and putting together a, su a successful um, uh, proposal. These are very competitive grants, so not everybody gets these grants and to get 1.5 million is, is a, a really nice number. So. Um, we're going to embark on a public process now and work with various boards and committees and the town council to move this project forward. I think someone said on the uh, on the grant award pro program today that they get over 100 applications and um, only 36 were uh, awarded this year. So that's, um, you know, about a third of the applications get awarded. So I was really pleased because this was um, a, a, a difficult um, it was a big effort to get this application together, and I'm glad that it was finally successful. I have a couple questions. Can, can you define, is there a definition of what village center means from a planning perspective? Well, it's really an area that has um, people living there as well as commercial um, and retail an office space. It's a place that's kind of a, a little um, smaller than the downtown and, um, you know, but it has essentially all the services that people need. You know, there's opportunity to get food, you can get gas there, um, you can get your hair cut, you can get really great um, uh, southwestern food. Um, so lots of different things are available there, but there are also people who live there in the Pomeroy co-op and um, single family houses and um, it's, it's really, uh, you know, it's, it's a, an area that's been developing. When I first moved to Amherst, there really wasn't much there at all. Um, but now that it's, um, it's been developed a little, it's, there's, there's a lot going on there. And, and this might be more of a question for Dave. Does this have anything to do with any plans for Hickory Ridge? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and in fact, we included Hickory Ridge in our grant proposal to the state. Um, so that project continues to move forward. Um, we are, are kind of working with, with the owners of Hickory Ridge and, and with our town attorney to move toward a closing on Hickory Ridge that I expect will happen in the next probably 60 to 75 days. Um, uh, where we then embark, will embark on uh, a really a community engagement process uh, with uh, neighbors, with users, with uh, businesses that are in the village center uh, and various committees and boards to talk about uh, what we'd all as a community like to see out on Hickory Ridge. Um, as we've said all along, there will be a strong solar component there, um, likely uh, um, about 20, 25 acres of solar. So that'll be great to, to have green energy be part of this project. We'll also be looking at you know, trail access and connectivity to the village center that will be improved through this Mass Works grant. So it's really exciting. We can, we can begin to build on this Mass Works grant, the acquisition of Hickory Ridge, and private reinvestment there. We do know that some of the property owners are interested in um, uh, developing or redeveloping some of their property. So all of this momentum can build and provide more uh, opportunities for businesses, for residential, and hopefully for more affordable housing as well in that village center. And I think there's probably a lot of projects you can update us on today, but I know this week, both of you, um, as well as uh, Superintendent of Public Works, Skilford Mooring, presented on the North Common project to council. Mm -hmm. Was that this Monday? I don't know if um, everybody's mm -hmm. tuned into that meeting, but do you guys want to talk a little bit about that project? All these dates seem to run together. <laughs> it's all one big Monday. It is. <laughs> Every day is Monday. Well, we presented on the North Common several times recently, Dave and I. We presented to the Historical Commission about two weeks ago, and then last week we presented to the Community Preservation Act Commission, co committee rather, and um, this Monday we presented to town council. So we're, um, we're very excited about the North Common as a, as a new project that's really gonna bring life to the, the downtown. It's a project that we've been working on since before 2013. We have gotten some um, CPAC, Community Preservation Act money, to uh, improve things on the common, but um, we just need a little bit more to get us over the, the goal line. Um, we have a plan for, um, for creating new pathways and uh, gathering spaces and adding um, seating and places where people can have a, a little picnic or a, a meeting with somebody and just have a cup of coffee. Um, we'd like to preserve most of the trees that are there. Uh, there are some of them that are probably gonna have to come down because they're um, older in decline and, um, and we wanna open it up a bit, but we really are very excited about the, the plan that we have. And we're gonna be working with the Department of Public Works to develop the plan as we move forward. And there will also be improvements made to the um, parking lot just north of the North Common, the one that is uh, between the Common and Main Street. So um, that area and the whole area in front of Town Hall we're hoping to um, make it more lively and more attractive for people to do things, have community events, have concerts, um, just stroll through the area and just have it be more welcoming. I, I think one of the counselors noted, uh, Councillor Ross noted that um, on, a, on when the, the day the election was called, he was downtown. It was a beautiful day to begin with, but the amount of activity that was happening on the North Common, even in its rugged condition, but because we had put a few picnic tables out there and throughout town, there were so many people out getting takeout from our local restaurants and enjoying the food. Um, and it was just really important to have spaces that you can activate that's engaging and welcoming to people as we emerge from the pandemic economic downturn. It's gonna be really important for our downtown, for our self image in some ways, but also for, um, our local businesses. Yeah, if I could just piggyback on that too, Paul, you've said a couple of times in meetings that, you know, um, one thing that uh, in any economy, but particularly coming out of this pandemic and, and the COVID uh, economy that we've all been been struggling through is, is the importance of uh, public funding and reinvestment by uh, the town, by the state and by the federal government. So both the North Common Project and and this new MassWorks grant that we just got really can spur 
uh, other uh, creative options from, you know, and, and that's one of the goals is to say, we're going to put this public money in, uh, what can the private sector do to, to match this money and, and match us uh, as we try to uh, recreate, you know, a, a, a vibrant business com uh, downtown, vi vibrant business community downtown. And uh, I think the North Common is, is this central feature and uh, I had also noted it was interesting this summer to watch the picnic tables move. They actually <laughs> move. People would pick them up if they wanted sun or if they wanted shade. And um, they moved. They never disappeared. Uh, people were very respectful. But it really, uh, uh, it really uh, saw a lot of usage this summer. So it was exciting. So one of the questions we had is, um, you mentioned a couple of times with some of these projects about spurring, you know, economic activity at these village centers in downtown. Um, so what else is the town doing to help businesses survive this current economic downturn? We received money from the CARES Act. Um, I think it was from the federal government through the state. Um, and uh, we have about $140,000 that we're uh, offering to small businesses under a micro grants program uh, that's being administered by Valley Community Development Corporation. Um, it allows uh, small businesses to apply for up to $10,000 worth of a grant to help them um, keep their business afloat. And that can be used for a number of different things, including paying for staffing and paying for improvements to their uh, physical structure. So we're really excited about this and we hope that people will take advantage of it. It's aimed uh, primarily at low income um, business owners and it's called a micro grant because it's, uh, it's also aimed at businesses that have uh, five or fewer uh, people working there, including the owner. Um, but we think it's really an opportunity for um, particularly some of the restaurants, but also the other small businesses in downtown to um, take advantage of this and, and you know help them to keep going through uh, this difficult time to emerge um, next spring or summer in a better place than they are now. Thank you, Chris. Do you know if there's a, a deadline for businesses to get that application in or? I think it's a rolling application. Okay. And there is, um, for any businesses or if you know of a business in town who is eligible to apply, we have that information at the bottom of our um, homepage. AmherstMA.gov in the news and announcements section. You can click there and get taken to the um, the application information. And there are people available to help uh, businesses to fill out the uh, forms. So you're not all on your own. So that's good news too. And I know I've seen the chamber and the bid offering their assistance in, to, to businesses in any way they can to help them with that application process as well. Anything um, Dave or Paul wanted to add to that? about our, our local business situation? The only thing I would add is that, you know, we have a great working relationship with the bid and chamber. We have weekly meetings with them. In fact, uh, Paul and I will meet with the, the um, president of the council and the bid and the chamber uh, staff tomorrow. Every Friday we meet um, and we've been doing that for quite a number of months. And it's an opportunity really to share ideas, uh, to exchange information and to, uh, it's really been a, a really productive, collaborative re uh, relationship and, and, and dialogue. And um, we have some ideas that we'd like their help with. They have some ideas that they need the, the town to help them with. And, and I think we've really been, um, I, I wouldn't say challenging each other, but I've, I think we've been rising to the, the collective challenge in the town of, of helping businesses, retail, uh, uh, restaurants, uh, you know, going back many months to you know, uh, creating more outdoor dining in our downtown, uh, trying to extend the, the dining season by, with the use of heaters and, and uh, tents and, and um, you know, some, some really creative things. And, and now we're looking to say, okay, how can we help businesses get through the holiday season um, as, as positively as, as we can? And then look to say, how can we open up uh, Amherst again as soon as the weather permits? Um, and, and kudos to the, the bid and chamber for looking for creative ways, uh, even looking at winter opportunities. What can we do on the common safely uh, under, under COVID uh, guidelines and recommendations to get people out, to get people to safely come downtown to, to have some joy and, and some, some provide some hope in, in the New England winter. And, and we all, we're, we love New England, but 
this is going to be a particularly challenging New England winter for all of us. Um, but how do we find hope? And you know, a great example I think was was all the great work that was done with the um, uh, farmers market this year, and that really brought so many thousands of people really over over the whole summer together in a safe environment where they could support local businesses, local farmers, uh, feed their families, and also get out and and provide a little hope every Saturday, every Saturday morning um, to 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 you know uh, have some conversation at a distance. Um, but to do something that we love to do, which is um, support, you know, agriculture in, in the small New England farm. So I think the Bidden Chamber are looking for ways to do that this winter and, and then pick that up in the spring. So keep the yeah, momentum going. It's a really good point because, uh, you know, I've gone to the farmer's market, I think, every weekend. And I, it's not like I buy a lot necessarily, but it is kind of become sort of a ritual because it's a nice time to spend on the town common. I think having it spread out on the common made a big difference. And uh, uh, what the farmer's market manager has said is that the the best day that they used to have in, in 2019 is an average day in 2020. And that they're, they've met, almost every vendor has exceeded all their, um, their um, sales from prior years. And so mm -hmm. it's been for the farmers uh, who are there, it's been a highly successful experience. And I think maybe it's the only game in town, you know, it's like we're looking for places to go that are safe. And I credit the farmer's market manager for really working with our inspection services and health people to make sure that it was a safe environment. And they, they set the rules early and they followed them all through the season. So just real credit to them for that. There were other things that we did over the summer to help the businesses survive. And we applied for um, a grant very early in the, it was probably May or June, to the Solomon Foundation. Mm -hmm. That was a joint effort with the bid and we got $10,000 from them. And a lot of the umbrellas that you see um, downtown and that you have seen over the summer uh, were from that grant. And it also paid for um, other improvements to outdoor dining to help make it a little more attractive. Um, and then we applied for a, a, a mass DOT, a mass department of transportation grant that also afforded us, I think it was 120 something thousand dollars to make improvements to the downtown uh, streetscape so that it would be more um, welcoming and amenable to outdoor dining. And um, so that really helped the, the businesses to be able to survive into the cold weather. And the heaters that you see um, in those outdoor dining spaces, most of them were paid for through that grant. And um, I have to commend the building commissioner who was out there with um, his facilities staff actually putting together the heaters for those restaurants. So that was a really good uh, community joint effort. Yeah, like holy smokes, people don't, you don't think about it, but every city in town was looking for heaters at the same time. Every city in town was looking for umbrellas at the same time. We were out there with everybody else mixing it up, trying to get these things into our town so our businesses survive. And, you know, our staff went above, they drove, I mean, I think the building commissioner drove to Schenectady to buy these things or something. It's just on a weekend, just to make sure we our businesses had them. So it's really, um, you know, and you think, how hard can it be to order some? You can't just buy these things from Home Depot or Lowe's. You have to get special kinds because it's commercial and the fire department has to sign off on them. And so it's, it really is a tremendous amount of work from our uh, all of our staff to make this happen. And just kudos to everybody there. Mm -hmm. It's all working together that made it happen. Mm -hmm. That's something that I think is a theme over the last, how many months has this been? Too many. 50, 50 <laughs> months. Um, teamwork <laughs> at all different levels. So um, I wanted to mention too that I got in my inbox just today uh, an invitation to the virtual lighting of the Merry Maple on Friday, mm -hmm. December 4th. Do you guys have any um, thoughts on that? I see they're putting up lights already. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's going to be virtual. They have a whole program. I think that credit again to the, we, we have, a, Dave mentioned this, we have really strong, we have strong leadership at the bid in the chamber. Um, and it's been a really good working relationship, high level of communication. Um, and I'm, you know, we weren't part of the organization of that. And I think they've really pulled together something that's actually pretty interesting. And they want people to participate and have your eggnog at home, I guess. So. At least it'll be warm, right? <laughs> Yeah. I was just before we leave, you know, all these great things and it, the farmer's market made me think too of, of this kind of COVID, you know, these eight months that we've all lived through and adapted um, uh, within 
and and it made me think you know what what might some of the lessons learned say about the farmers market be you know we we had to spread out on the nor on the main part of the common uh, we had some different vendors come in but you know it, it created a, a different kind of vibrancy in a slightly different part of our downtown so I'll be interested and in, hopefully we can have some conversations with the leadership of the of the farmers market over the winter to say you know kind of what lessons did they learn what did we learn um, you know we, we've always had it in the Spring Street lot there are some pluses and minuses to having it on the on the common um, we didn't have any other we didn't have the fair this year we didn't have some of the big events that mm -hmm. they utilize the common but um, but it did provide for a whole lot more space for the for the uh, for the farmers market to do their thing. So, um, yeah. And and the Boy Scouts will be back um, right after Thanksgiving uh, with their uh, tree lot at the Kendrick Park. And mm -hmm. many of the lessons we learned from the farmers market are being applied to create a safe environment for people to shop for trees at Kendrick Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. And we can we should also mention our playground that's going to be built in the spring mm -hmm. at Kendrick Park. It's about halfway up the park um, on the west side, and it's going to be very exciting. It's really well designed. The Department of Public Works put the design together with the help of the planning department, and um, there's going to be a lot of nice play equipment and places to sit, and it'll be really a beautiful addition to Kendrick Park. And that, Chris, I think we're on a pretty tight timeline. We've got to have that uh, constructed by June, June 15th 1st. or so, June 1st? Okay. June 1st, yep. And mm -hmm. that was uh, funded by um, a grant from the state so mm -hmm. with some additional funds from the town. So that was also a, a joint effort of the planning department and the um, DPW working together. Yeah, I think that's going to be a huge hit. I mean, if 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 uh, what we did at Groff Park is any indication, <laughs> a new playground, wow! I I I, I drove around Groff Park yesterday, and it was hopping at about three o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and there were people on the playground, and obviously the spray park is is uh, uh, turned off until next spring, but people on the you know distancing and and doing activities uh, safely, but. Um, uh, that place has been a buzz since we opened the playground. So uh, looking forward to this new playground right in our the heart of our downtown. And I have to say that um, sometimes people get frustrated with how long it takes to get things done. Um, I've been in here in the town hall for, I don't know, 17 years or so. And I remember um, working on the initial plan for Kendrick Park. And it was it was a really long time ago that we started this. I think it was 2007 or 2008. And we had ideas about what we wanted to do. And we hired a, a landscape architect to come up with a plan and then um, didn't have any money. And now little by little, we're being able to uh, piece, piece it together. And I'm really excited to see that it's finally happening. Sounds like 2021 and 2022, downtown Amherst or just Amherst in general is gonna be looking different and vibrant. And it's exciting as a community member, at least, um, especially on the playgrounds I've got someone in my house is very excited about another playground. So yeah, thank you for that. And your daughter too, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her too. <laughs> no, that's a great point. I mean, new playground, spray parks, uh, playground downtown, the dog park will open in 21. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot to look forward to. And I think we all need that right now, those mm -hmm. positives, uh, that hopeful outlook that, um, you know, we're going to come out of 20 and, and we're going we're gonna to have challenges, no doubt budgetarily and, and this pandemic is not over, but uh, I think we have to, to kind of zero in on and focus in on those positives that, that we're a community that's moving forward uh, despite the challenges that uh, the world is facing and, and we will get through this. Amherst will and, and Massachusetts will. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I wanna make sure that we mention is, um, you know, one of the things that the governor noted in his announcement about the um, Pomeroy Village um, improvements is that the connectivity to two environmental justice neighborhoods and that's that's a the term for people where there are a concentration of low-income people and you, you don't really know it until you look at a map but getting hickory ridge and connecting that to pomeroy village really provides access to lots of people who live on east hadley road that there'll be walking paths that get you very easily to the Pomeroy Village Business District, which, and that area is kind of isolated now in terms of access to food and things like that. And that's the intent of all this investment of town and state money is to help promote that along with 
uh, building the, the uh, multi-use path along East Hadley Road to help people get to the new playground at Groff Park. So all these things are not just sort of done randomly. There's a you know an overall view in mind to help to bring services to people most and to improve our town infrastructure in general. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a perfect way to tie the discussion back all together, Paul. So that's a really great point. It's all these exciting projects, but they do come together in some cohesive vision. So important to note. So I, I will say that we are at 1226. We've got about four minutes. I'll remind folks who are joining us live, if they wanna ask any questions, feel free to do so. Um, raise your hand in Zoom or use the Q&A function. And I will monitor for, for those coming in. Um, but with that being said, if there's any in the last few minutes, are there any um, things that you, our special guests wanna share that they didn't get asked? I'd like to share that I think that um, Town of Amherst has a really good uh, staff and that we're all working very hard to make the town, you know, a good and a better place. And I, I hope that people realize that and yeah, and we work really well together. So good work. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Dave, anything from you? Oh, I would just echo that, Chris, absolutely. And, and that goes out also to our, our boards and committees and, and the council. You know, a lot of people, I, I just don't think, see uh, how, how many meetings, how many discussions, the, the movement of, of projects and initiatives through um, our democratic process is really important. And, and um, by and large, people are so committed and so passionate about this town. And uh, having grown up here, sometimes I'm, you know, I'm, I, you know, I just am overwhelmed with with the commitment there is to make our community better. And that's one of the things I always love about Amherst is, is we're not uh, complacent. We're not, we're not uh, comfortable to sit back and say, this is as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. Want to be better in all of these categories. Um, you know, uh, so uh, that's what makes, that's what, you know, helps me get up in the morning and get motivated and work with all these great boards and committees and we will have our challenges, but by and large, everybody rolls up their sleeves and says, how can we make Amherst a better place for our, all of our residents, as well as uh, people who want to come here to study and learn and, and work and raise their families. So uh, I think that motivates all of us to do better every day. Great, right. thank you, Dave, and thank you, Chris. Um, I wanna take a quick opportunity to remind folks that um, tonight is November 19th. There's a budget forum at 6.30 p.m. Um, all of that information is on our, our homepage and on our public meetings calendar. And we have another opportunity to tomorrow morning, Friday, November 20th from eight to 9 a.m. to have a, a cup of joe finance edition um, where you can ask your your finance and budget questions to the town manager, to our finance director, Sean Mangano, and to our comptroller. Am I right with the comptroller? Okay, and our comptroller, Sonia Aldred. So that's a cup of joe tomorrow morning um, at 8 a.m. Paul, any, anything you wanna? No, I think this is a with? great, there's a lot, boy, it, until you start talking about it all at once, there's so much happening and we didn't even touch on things. I mean, you're presenting a project this afternoon, Brianna, to the town council and there's many other things that are in the pipeline that we didn't even touch on. So I think there, you're right, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I think after we heard about the Mass Works Grant, we said, oh gosh, now we have to do it. And how do we engage the public successfully which again, that's a project Brianna has been working on. Like, how do we engage people, not just through Zoom, but other ways where, where you don't have to be at a certain place at a certain time. So that's all yeah. really exciting stuff. I think we're gonna have to put a big section into the state of the town for, for the upcoming year as a, as a preview to all of these exciting projects. So uh -huh. that way we can kind of put it all in one place and, and then get really scared about the work that we have to do. <laughs> Um, but okay. Well, I want to thank everyone who joined us and for those who are watching, um, on our YouTube channel and thank you so much, Chris and Dave for joining us. Great job. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. Brianna. Bye. Thank Have you. a nice day.